Misaki Ayuzawa is the first female student council president of the previously all-boys Seika High School. While she is highly respected by the female students and staff, the male students both fear and loathe her. One particular student, Takumi Yuzui, irritates Misaki because he bluntly rejects girls who confess their love to him. Misaki works secretly at a maid cafe called Maid Latte to support her family due to her father leaving them with a large debt. However, she is discovered by Takumi and fears her secret will be exposed at school. After hearing Misaki's reasons for working, Takumi keeps her secret and chooses to annoy her by regularly visiting Misaki at work as a customer. When Misaki becomes sick due to stress and fatigue, Takumi notices and advises Misaki to loosen up, but she rejects his advice. At work, three male students from her school, whom she routinely ridicules as the idiot trio discover Misaki in her uniform. The three start to harass Misaki, but Takumi intervenes. Misaki apologizes to Takumi before fainting. After Misaki recovers, Takumi tells Misaki that he asked the boys to keep Misaki's secret but starts teasing Misaki about her becoming his personal maid for a day as his reward. It's time for the annual school festival and Misaki wants to use the opportunity to improve the school's image and encourage more girls to enroll. However, problems arise with class 2 minus 2 because the boys' activity proposals are attempts boy the girls. The boys ask Takumi to persuade her, though he puts very little effort into it. On the suggestion from the class's three girls, Misaki decides that class 2 minus 2 will hold a cafe. Later, Takumi warns Misaki that her hostility towards the boys will eventually backfire. On the day of the festival, things go well and there is a large turnout of girls. However, she finds out that the boys of class 2 minus 2 are cosplaying in period military outfits. Taking over the cafe, and rounding up girls as prisoners. She scolds the boys, but they turn on her and leave the girls to run the cafe alone, which both Misaki and Takumi help the girls. Seeing the action from the classroom windows, the boys return and serve the customers properly, making the cafe a success. During the festival bonfire, Takumi finds Misaki resting under a tree. She thanks him for his assistance, but Takumi teases her about being his personal maid. Maid Lottie decides to host a Little Sisters Day where the maids dress up and act as little sisters to their customers. Misaki has trouble acting the part, since she has no experience regarding what it is like to be a younger sister and her own little sister not being a perfect example. Her boss, Satsuki, allows Misaki to skip this event by changing shift, but her co-worker, Hanoko accuses Satsuki of favoritism and Misaki not taking her job seriously, convincing Misaki to do some research and practice. When Little Sister's Day arrives, Misaki has finally perfected the act of a little sister, which awes the customers, at least until Takumi arrives. His constant teasing and asking for the impossible causes Misaki to finally lose her cool, but when he tries to leave, Misaki realizes her mistake and then begs Takumi not to go, making everyone in Maid Latte attracted to her monas. Later at school, as Takumi rejects a confession from a girl, while he witnesses Misaki rescuing a student from a falling ladder, noticing she got injured after stopping the ladder, he manages to convince her to have it bandaged in the infirmary. Later at Maid Latte, which is hosting Maid Ranger's Day, Misaki decides to vent her anger towards Takumi onto the idiot trio as the white maid ranger, an idea Takumi suggested. Maid Latte is visited by Aoi, a famous net idol who also happens to be Satsuki's nephew. Due to a fight with her father, Aoi will be staying with Satsuki for a while, making Aoi excited to stay and try the cafe's uniform, much to Satsuki's charging. Meanwhile, as the chef is unable to make it to the cafe, Takumi decides to take over and impresses the ladies with his own slightly modified version of omelet rice. Aoi finds Takumi attractive but he repeatedly ignores her advances. She is so persistent that Takumi pushes her down on the locker room floor. Misaki arrives to push Takumi away and slaps Aoi for repeatedly trying to get his attention. It is then revealed that Aoi is, in fact, a boy, something Satsuki knew all along and which both Takumi and Misaki discovered earlier. Aoi reveals he ran away because his classmates made fun of his hobby of liking cute girlish things, and his father didn't like him cross-dressing as a girl. Misaki and Takumi convince Aoi to go back home, but not before Aoi promising to make Takumi his. Later, Aoi returns to Maid Latte where he criticizes Misaki for not wearing girlish clothes as she's a girl, but Misaki counters his argument by pointing out how a cross-dressing boy like him should be wearing manly clothes. They end up agreeing that they should not criticize each other on the basis of the clothes they wear. Regardless, Aoi sends Misaki a cute dress, much to her embarrassment. Satsuki warns Misaki about a group of stalkers targeting cosplay cafes, but Misaki doesn't take it seriously, not even when Yuzui pretends to stalk her and warn her not to take things lightly. One night, when Misaki is closing the cafe all by herself, she is caught by the stalkers themselves, who are none other than two of her regular customers. Yuzui hears the commotion at Maid Lot and heads there to rescue Misaki. The stalkers, having restrained Misaki with handcuffs and gagged her mouth with tape, think that the real Misaki is a submissive woman, but they get a rude surprise when she breaks out of her handcuffs and reveals the real Misaki, a very angry woman who proceeds to pound both of them using her Aikido. When Yuzui finally arrives, he can only do nothing but laugh at what he sees. Days after the stalker's arrest, Aoi returns to Maid Latte to give everyone including Yuzui a cell phone photo of Misaki wearing the dress he made earlier, 
Much to Misaki's horror, Misaki has acquired a group of fans at school, the Inayama Quintuplets. While they are good-natured and she enjoys their company, they want to know everything about her, and this unfortunately could reveal her secret part-time job, which she dodges mostly with Yuzui's help. As the days pass, she is torn between telling them the truth and risking to ruin the good image she has on them. She and Yuzui have an argument on the school rooftop, which Misaki accidentally makes Yuzui drop a photo of them with her wearing her maid uniform in the direction of the Inayama brothers. As she freaks out, Yuzui assures her he will get it back, but not before stealing her first kiss. He jumps from the roof and grabs the photo while falling into the school pool. A relieved Misaki calls him an idiot for making her worried. The brothers hear the commotion at the pool, but thanks to Yuzui's acting, the brothers think Misaki is Yuzui's bodyguard. He then convinces them not to follow Misaki anymore, thus keeping her secret safe. At the hospital, Misaki visits Yuzui but leaves in disgust when he asks her to nurse him in her maid outfit. As Misaki is still thinking about the incident at the rooftop, a phone call from her friends Sekura and Shizuko asks her to stop a fight between two Seika High students and three students from the prestigious Miyabigayaka Academy. As she brings the two Seika students who started the fight to Miyabigayaka Academy to apologize, with Yuzui tagging along, Misaki learns from them that the fight started when one of the Miyabigayaka students, Hirofumi Kagane, insulted their interest in chess and called them flies. When they finally arrive, Misaki tells Hirofumi that her classmates will apologize, but only after he apologizes first. He agrees, only after they beat him in chess, which Yuzui does easily, humiliating him. Later, the Miyabigiyaka student council arrives at Seika High, led by its president, Tora Igarashi. Tora apologizes to Misaki on Hirofumi's behavior, and as compensation he offers Misaki a scholarship to Miyabigiyaka Academy. Misaki is impressed with Tora's gentlemanly behavior, not knowing that he's really a lecherous person who has taken an interest in her. At Maid Lade, the cafe has a special ladies' day event where the maids dress up as handsome men, with Misaki being a huge hit with the female customers. Misaki enjoys dressing up as a man but Yuzui reminds her that she's still a girl and wonders if she will accept the scholarship from Miyabigiyaka. Meanwhile, Tora learns of Misaki's part-time job, Given three days to decide, Misaki is torn whether to accept the Miyabigayaka scholarship or to stay at Seika. When she finally goes to Miyabigayaka to give her answer, Sakura and Shizuko are worried since Seika High wouldn't be what it is today without Misaki. Even though they want the best for Misaki, they manage to rally the student council and her fans to head for Miyabigayaka and convince her not to transfer. At the Miyabigayaka student council room, Misaki is about to give Tora her reply when one of his classmates accidentally spilled the drinks he was serving on her uniform, forcing Misaki to clean herself in their shower room. But when she tries to find her uniform, she learns it has been taken to be cleaned, forcing her to wear a rather revealing maid uniform. It is then when Tora shows his true self, revealing he knows about Misaki's part-time job. With both of them locked inside the student council room, guarded by his minions, Tora thinks Misaki came to accept his offer to get his attention and money just like the other women who are interested in him. But Misaki disappoints him, telling him that she came to reject his offer since she has no intention of leaving Seika behind. Nevertheless, Tora pins her down and tries to forcefully kiss her, until Yuzui, having defeated Tora's minions, comes to Misaki's rescue. Misaki thanks Yuzui and, wearing her Seika uniform again, she is greeted by her friends waiting outside the Miyabigayaka gate. Yuzui narrates his version of Mamatero with Misaki as the titular character herself, her guardians played by Sakura and Yukimura and Mamatero's animal companions played by the idiot trio. Misaki is on a quest to rescue women captured by a demon and then taken to Onigashima Island. On her journey, she saves the idiot trio from getting eaten by their ringmaster after the animals tell her which village has the demon been frequenting recently. Eventually forming a group, they arrived at Seika Village, which is now a stinking wasteland filled with men driven to madness with their women captured leaving no one to do the household chores. Obtaining the directions to Onigashima, the group crosses the ocean, where they encounter the princess of the sea and a turtle, a reference to the story of Yurishima Taro. They later encounter Pheasant Kurotatsu and the pirate ship Miyabigayaka, which usually destroys with a rocket launcher. When they finally arrive at the island, the idiots and Misaki sneak into the demon's lair, with Misaki disguised as a maid. There, they found the Seika women wearing maid uniforms in a grand palace. After the idiots blew Misaki's cover, she is shocked to learn that Yuzui is in fact the demon himself, and that he never kidnapped the women. In fact, it was the women who followed him since they got sick and tired of serving their selfish men and took over the palace. The narrator ends the story by claiming Misaki and Yuzui became a couple despite Misaki protesting against the ending and the idiot trio dying in unfortunate ends. In reality, the entire story is in fact a dream Misaki is having while napping in the student council room, a result of Yuzui putting headphones on her with the story he narrated, designed to send subliminal messages into her dreams. Playing on a CD player, Sekura is an avid fan of the indie rock band Uxmas High, 
and falls in love with its vocalist, Kuka. The next day, Sakura invites Misaki and Shizuko to a tea party that the band hosts next week at a cafe where the idiot trio are working part-time as waiters. As the meeting goes smoothly, Kuga starts to take an interest in Misaki and simply ignores Sakura. When Misaki leaves the bathroom, she finds him outside with his bandmate Ku. Kuga again attempts to flirt with her and Misaki is shocked when he tells her he doesn't have feelings for Sakura, the invitation to her being just fanciris. Despite Ku telling him to stop, Kuga continues to hit on Misaki until Yuzui, disguised as a waiter, stops him. Yuzui can only give some advice for Misaki, who is unsure on how to deal with this development. Back at the table, Kuga continues to hit on Misaki, even asking Sakura to invite her to the concert. This hurts Sakura, although she complies. As his flirts become insults towards Misaki, Sakura tells him to stop. Misaki, having enough of his behavior, grabs him by the necktie and tells him that she won't entrust Sakura to someone like him. After leaving the cafe, Shizuko reprimands Misaki for making a scene at the cafe and Sakura for not being careful about choosing boys. Sakura is comforted by Misaki with a pat on the head and Misaki hopes that one day, Sakura will find someone that will truly love her. Meanwhile, in the cafe, Ku begins scolding Kuga for his behavior in response Kuga puts on a sour face and ignores him, telling Ku he acts like his father while Shu questions why the waiters are staring at them so intensely. One day, Takumi Yuzui meets Misaki's mother and helps her carry her apples. To thank him, she invites him over to her house for tea with Suzuna. Misaki arrives home from school and is shocked seeing him there. As she drags him to the park warning him not to come to her home again, Sakura and Shizuko see them and think they're dating. The next day Sakura, Shizuko, and Misaki decide to follow Yuzui to have a peek at his private life and confirm rumors that he is rich. However, Yuzui knows he's being followed, so he leads the three on a wild goose chase around town. After the girls decide to give up, Misaki meets Yuzui by the roadside tending to an abandoned kitten. Misaki, claiming that she is indeed not interested in Yuzui's private life, gets his address from him in case she's interested. It's the Seika High Sports Festival, and Misaki wins every event for the girls' team. At the obstacle race, where its first prize is a kiss from an unwilling and horrified Sakura, Misaki is leading until one of the boys pushes her into the pool to disqualify her, but Takumi saves her from falling. Yuzui wins the race, but decides to give the prize to Misaki. Later, Misaki enters the costume race on behalf of Shizuko. Inside the changing tent, she accidentally switches her costume, a maid uniform, with Yukimura's. Yukimura is jeered by the boys for wearing it, but seeing this, Yuzui and Misaki, wearing cool costumes, helps and defends Yukimura and finish the race together. Despite Misaki getting disqualified for mixing her costume, Yukimura's first sports festival ends happily, and Misaki wants to make it better next year. Daoki Arate, the strongest delinquent in size in middle school, wants to be like his revered senpai, the former gang leader Shiroyan. But he and his gang can't believe Shiroyan, Meiya Shirakawa of the idiot trio, has gone soft. Aratek is unable to accept it and wants the old Naya back, so he and his gang abducts a cross-dressing Yukimura, who they mistake for Naya's girlfriend. This attracts the attention of Ayuzawa and Yuzui, and, with help from Aoi, who studies at Saizen, goes looking for him. After changing into disguises and a few interruptions by their friends, they sneak into Eritake's hideout, where they find him arguing with one of his friends over Naya. A fight later erupts between Naya and Eritake, with the former defeating the latter. A crying Eritake admits he only wanted to be strong like Naya, who later gives him some words of encouragement. With the ordeal over, the idiot trio introduce Misaki to the gang as their chief maid president, a more fearsome gangster than them, much to her horror. However, amidst the the chaos, they have forgotten about Yukimura. This is where we're going to have to leave off for today. If you like this video, here's another one just like it that you should check out. I will be breaking this anime down into multiple parts. Now if you like this video, make sure to like the video, why not subscribe? I'll be uploading daily videos like this one. I'll see you next time.